Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Harvest Melody and I'm gonna be sipping on some iced tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, chrome orange, Mars black, green oxide, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil for drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number four round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting a background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna get myself just kind of a neutral beige type of color that's going to complement all the elements that we're gonna be putting in our painting. So I've already magically kind of pre-mixed the color that I'm going for, but I'll show you how I got there. So this is the color that I'm going for as the main area on the, key, on the background. I'm gonna make it go a little bit lighter as it comes down towards the bottom left-hand corner, but this is where I'm starting. So how I got to this color was I used about equal parts of my yellow. So I'm gonna save some of my yellow for later. So just a little bit of yellow. Let me turn this this way so you can see it a little bit better. A little bit of yellow, about equal parts of my brown. I mix those two together. And then what I'll do is I'm going to be adding a little bit of white to it. So not much white, and you can add it just a little bit at a time because the white will take over. And that's about the shade that I'm going for. You could certainly make yours lighter or darker, or you could even use a different kind of color in your background. So once I've got it all mixed the way that I want and have the color that I want, I'm going to be painting up in this top right hand corner. I'm going to be doing mine kind of at a diagonal. So when I go to make it lighter down in this bottom left hand corner, I'm going to be just kind of utilizing this angle just because I thought it would be artistically nice and give a, a really cool balance to the painting. I suppose you could really use any um, direction of brush stroke that you would like. I may even utilize multiple layers on my background to get it nice and smooth looking, but you might find that this first coat is, is good for you and you like what has happened with it. But I do know with acrylic paint, they tend to be pretty translucent and see-through, even, you know, if you have the heavier body paint when you're using a, a firm brush like this to get it to travel very far, what'll happen is you kind of create thin spots and thick spots. 
throughout the painting and as it dries that's going to make it kind of almost look a little streaky of sorts so if you want to um, do another layer in order to eliminate that streakiness you can certainly do that but this will give you a nice good blend in a minute I'm going to start introducing white paint to my um, to my background color so that way it's going to get lighter and lighter coming down here so right now I'm picking up my background color plus white on my brush about equal parts of both and I'm going to get them to blend in with each other so I like to put the color on there and then just kind of back it into that previous section in these really nice long brush strokes so that way it provides you with a nice smooth kind of transition now I'm going to pick up what more white with just a little bit of that background color so it's going to get lighter and lighter as it comes down into this bottom left hand corner and again I'm going to just kind of keep going back and forth like this so I can get these sections to blend in really nicely together now I'm just going to pick up white with my dirty brush and this is going to get it to go really nice and light down in this bottom left hand corner. I'm kind of doing this because I want my saxophone to really pop out of my canvas and I also want um, just almost to, it to look like there's some kind of light down here in the bottom left hand corner but you could certainly you know have yours all one solid color if you wanted to you could even this is just for demonstration purposes you could have like light areas going in through here but I'm going to kind of just keep mine as a gradient and I'm going to have the movement of my musical harvest um, objects those will those will provide the movement to to the canvas so you can certainly have fun with this if you feel that you want to do another layer on it feel free to do so but we will be switching to our pencil for the next step so once you've got this background all nice and completed you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your pencil and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our saxophone. I'm gonna be using my pencil, and I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry. So I'm going to be giving you a couple of markers and we'll just connect those markers. We're just going for a nice generic shape of a saxophone. Um, if it's not 100% accurate in its size, don't worry about it. It's just a fun harvest melody type painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down the left hand side on the top of my canvas about three and a half to four inches, make myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna come down from that maybe about an inch, inch and a half make myself another marker. Then I'm gonna come down to the bottom part of my canvas. I'm going to make myself a marker right about here, which is a little bit to the left of the center. So if this is about the center of my canvas, I'm coming a little bit to the left of there to make myself a mark. And then I'm gonna come maybe about three inches to the left of that to make myself another mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the two left ones together and then this top one and the, the right one together. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be coming up in an arcing kind of motion in through here and then connect it all the way down to this bottom one with a diagonal line. So I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit in, in through here, make myself a little bit of a curving arcing line in through here and then just go straight you should be a little bit out of a diagonal for this to connect here and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight you can you know just use a nice sketcherly type of uh, um, drawing technique to get these to connect and I'll do the same thing for here so I'm going to come up in this diagonal type of motion I might use my chalk in a minute to for um, 
for these upper regions if they are a little bit difficult for you to see on camera. And then I'm just going to curve this similarly to here and then just bring this down to connect with this other marker. So hopefully your saxophone gets a little bit more narrow up by the neck and if it doesn't you can certainly adjust it a little bit but that's the goal to have it a little bit more narrow up at the neck and I'm going to just use my chalk so you can see if you're having difficulty with the camera, you can see this is where I've got these two um, lines in through here. I know I'm going from dark to light in color, so sometimes it makes it difficult to see on the camera. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the horn part. So on the bottom, I'm gonna come to the right of here about four inches, so a little bit wider than here. So whatever you have for a distance here, you'll go just a little bit wider than that. You can make yourself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then I'm gonna come directly up from here. I would say maybe about four to five inches and then come into the left just a little bit, something like this. I'm going to connect these two with a with a slight arcing line like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar kind of curve if you come over to the left straight over to maybe about an inch away from your saxophone and then go straight up about an inch and a half that's where I've got this and I'm going to give it a similar curve to this and meet this marker right in through here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a curve like this, and then just meet this marker in through here. Then I need to create the horn part up in through here. So I'm gonna to go to the right of here. I would say about an inch, inch and a half, and then I'm gonna bring this up right about here. So if this is about halfway in my canvas, I'm about two inches below that. So that's as tall, the, the top part of my, my horn. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this in a big oval. So just to give you a, a little barrier of sorts here, I'm going to, on, on the right hand side, I'm not gonna come out much more than maybe about two inches, inch and a half to two inches from here. So if you wanted to, you could certainly make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then over on this side, I'm gonna come out maybe about, um, I would say about an inch, inch and a half away from the horn in through here. And I'm gonna just connect these with an oval. So I'm gonna bring this out in through here like this, and then just make sure I curve this along the side in through here, and then back up making sure that I connect my, all of my markers with, a, with an oval type of a shape like this, and of course, Pencils are great because you can keep adjusting it until you feel that you've got it as round as you want to. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and created, you can put your pencil away or, or whatever tool you were using as your as your writing tool. Let me just use my chalk in case this is difficult to see on camera. So you've got both, both um, colors to, to watch and then I will be putting my pencil away, taking out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are doing the base coat for our saxophone. I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors that I'm using are orange, brown, yellow, and um, a little bit of white. No, I think I'm just gonna use orange, brown, and yellow. So what I'm gonna, in essence, do is make myself like a, a, a brass type of color because that's what saxophones are typically made of. So I am going to be using I've already pre-mixed my color in through here. I used about equal parts of orange, yellow, and brown. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I got there. So I've got orange, and I'm just using my dirty little trough here from my, from my other color. Orange, and a little bit of brown, and just kind of mixing them together. I, I know that I'm gonna be doing a lot more details on top of my saxophone, so I'm really just going for a nice neutral um, base coat for this that is going, maybe a little bit more yellow here, that is going to give me the appearance of like a brass type of color. So I've got that orange in there which is going to um, steer it into a little bit different of a color than the background. So that's this is about where I'm headed with this color. And then I'm just going to color in the entire 
the entire instrument with this. And again, if your color doesn't end up exactly the same as mine, don't worry about it in this um, step because again, we're going to have all of the details that are going to that are going to allow us to tweak that value of that color if we if we need to in the future on those other um, on those other steps. So I'm just bringing it all the way to my to my outline. I might end up erasing some of my chalk marks uh, in after I'm done this, but if you have, you're painting it in and you're like, oh, I, th I don't think I want to go all the way to my pencil mark or all the way to my, my outline, that's totally fine. You can just get the instrument on here and then come back and erase any lines that you might not have wanted to utilize or you didn't want to go all the way out to them. So I'm just kind of going all the way down here and then I'm going to go ahead and color in my horn section in through here and then once I have this all painted in I'm going to make just a couple of little marks with my brush um, for some pieces on the outside because I want to have a base coat for um, some of the little valves and stuff that kind of stick out the side of the of the instrument so I'm going to and again I'm just doing kind of an interpretive um, design for my saxophone. I'm not putting all of the valves and the um, other pieces to the saxophone in exactly the proper place. I feel like I have a good shape to my um, saxophone, but I know when it comes to those little details that I'm not going to be 100% accurate. So what I'm in essence going to do now is I'm just going to take my uh, big brush. You could certainly use a smaller brush for this, but I'm going to just kind of make myself a couple of little pieces that are going to stick out as if they're the they're the little valves and stuff that come out the side of the instrument and I think I'm going to have maybe one coming down we'll say in through here so just long pieces they can be actually I think I'm going to switch to my medium brush I want to make sure that I can keep a little bit more control so I just switched to my medium brush to give myself some of these exterior little pieces. Um, I think I'm going to have maybe maybe one or two coming out over in through here, maybe one coming out this top portion, and you could certainly have fun with um, getting the details accurate on this particular step for these exterior little pieces. You can have as many as you want. You can have them going in different directions, but I just want to get a base coat on them so I can have some sort of um, semblance when I go to do the details. Maybe a couple of little bumps in through here, and maybe I'll have another one coming out this side over in through here. And again, I am definitely, I know mine is not <laughs> totally accurate, but again, it, it gives the, it gives the idea or information that we've got something other than just a straight line going in through there. And then we're going to utilize this medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat for your saxophone on, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the base coat or the first layer of our harvest items. These are going to be all the items that are flying out of our saxophone. So I'm going to be using my, law, or my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, orange, yellow, brown, and maybe some black and white, but I'll call them out as I use them. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to be using some orange. I'm going to put my pumpkins in place. You could seriously have as many of each one of these items. You can mix it up. You can have other kinds of items coming flying out of yours. Feel free to explore your creative side. But I'm going to be using some pumpkins and autumn flowers and gourds and wheat and things that are um, familiar to me. So I'm going to put my first pumpkin coming out somewhere in through here and for me my pumpkins are always going to have these little like ripply edges around them so I'm just kind of wiggling my brush around the edges something like this and then I'm just going to paint it in with my orange color. It is going to take on a little unusual color because of what we've got on the background but we will be um, modifying 
that and adding actually I think I want this a little a little bigger um, will be with our um, details on each particular object we will um, be getting that color to be more true and I'm utilizing this background as a good base coat for these because I want them to have that nice warmth to them. I'm going to do a partial pumpkin kind of coming out the side over here so again just kind of maybe that's the bottom of the pumpkin with a couple of ripples I'm gonna have another pumpkin up up and through here kind of another oops I just picked up black hold on one second let me just quickly wash and dry my brush that's what happens when I'm looking more at my canvas as opposed to my uh, as opposed to my palette so just quick quick correction there pick up some orange on my brush I'm going to stick it over in through here maybe this one comes over and through here and it's just kind of a real big one that we're just seeing the bottom portion of as it's flying off the canvas or out of view and then I think I'm going to do some red flowers so I'm just washing and drying my brush picking up some red paint and I'm going to have these kind of like autumn daisy type of flowers so and they're going to be pretty darn big too so I'm going to have one of them in through here and as I'm doing these again I'm just utilizing red on my brush right now we will be um, able to make more details on these later but for my flowers I'm just doing this generic kind of style for them to look like a nice um, representational of like a, a, a daisy of sorts. I'm going to have one up and through this direction. This one maybe we're going to be looking at it from the side so I'll have it more of my um, petals kind of draping down like this and I again I'm just using my medium brush. I'm giving these petals kind of a little curve to them. Maybe this top side I'm going to have those ones over on the other side so I'll just give those ones these little bumps and then I'm gonna have another big one over here and I think this one too I'm gonna have this one maybe fully kind of looking from the side so we're gonna have this one pretty darn big I really like these this um, these autumn the reds and the orange with this background kind of color to utilize as a base coat because it provides them with a little bit more warmth to them and has the gives them deeper tones as they're um, drying especially acrylic paint since it is um, translucent in nature most of it I'm going to put my center of this flower is going to kind of stick up in through there so that's the position I'm putting that one in I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to put a couple of gourds on here so gourds can come in all kinds of colors so I think I'm just gonna do mine with a like a gray base to it so I'm gonna add some white to a little bit of black maybe a little bit of brown as well so this will just provide me with a nice base for um, these autumn gourds <laughs> of sorts so I'm gonna put one in through here and this one's gonna just have like a round kind of base to it I'm gonna have another one maybe it behind this pumpkin in through here and that's another thing you can have these objects overlapping one another they don't all have to be independent of each other they don't all have to just occupy their own space you can make one in front of the other so don't feel like you have to you know put each one equally spaced apart they can certainly you know take up the space with one another so then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be using brown yellow and white on my brush at the same time for the wheat that I'm going to be putting so I'm going to dip my brush in brown yellow and a touch of white and I'm going to have all three of those colors on my brush so I can get um, some good kind of um, dimension to these and again we'll be adding the um, more details to it later but right now I'm just going to kind of start with this as a base coat so I'm going to just put maybe one in through here and then for the edges I'm just going to kind of bring them down like this and maybe add maybe a little bit skinnier on that bottom and then I'm going to do that on both sides so something like this is going to give me the essence of these wheat type of um, objects. I'm going to do one maybe coming over on this side in through here and then again just giving this yellow, brown, and white is where I've got the colors 
on my brush right now and just reloading one more time, yellow, brown, and white. Like, well, maybe once or twice I'll have to reload again. <laughs> and they don't all have to come out in the same direction. So the trajectory coming out of the horn is gonna kind of splay out like this, but they don't all have to go exactly the same direction. So I think I'm gonna have maybe one of these pieces of wheat up in through here, and then maybe just a little more white so we can see it, and then just kind of give myself these little pieces coming along the side. Maybe I'll have one coming out behind this flower in through here and just reloading my brush, yellow, brown, and white. And of course, because we're using all these colors on our brush at the same time, they're gonna provide an assortment of tones within that, within that piece of wheat. So yellow, brown, and white, I think I'm gonna have one more maybe kind of behind this gourd in through here like this and then just kind of utilizing the tip of my brush to give myself these little pieces coming out the sides maybe we'll have it sticking out over in through here as well and then i think that's all i'm going to be doing for that step i will be utilizing this same medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the highlights and the shadows on the main body of the saxophone. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are that brass color, black, orange, yellow, and white. So I'm going to first put in my shadows and then I'm gonna make sure that everything kind of blends in, the base blends in with my um, shadows and then I'll be adding some highlights. So first things first, I wanna give myself a little hole in my saxophone so we can have noise come out of it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and orange on my brush. The black is gonna take over and um, overpower the orange, but we're gonna utilize the orange to get it to go lighter into the um, saxophone. So I'm gonna give a couple of markers so I know how far I want this to um, go. So if this is the bottom part of that horn, I'm gonna go up about a half of an inch and give myself a little bit of a marker. And then from the top edge, I'm gonna come down about an inch and a half. So this way, it looks like kind of we're looking at it from the side. And then I'm gonna create an oval with, um, with these two markers. And the oval should not be any wider than these areas in through here because that's where it's coming out of. So if you just were to kind of extend this arcing motion, that would be about as far as that is, and then extend this up into this vicinity, that would be about as far as that is. And then I'm going to connect my markers in an oval type of shape like this. And then what I'll do is I'm going to if I have a ton of black on my brush, I would wash it, but I can tell that I don't have much black left on my brush, so I'm just going to pick up orange, and I'm going to get this to go into a lighter, more um, orangey shade in the middle of that horn. So if you felt that you wanted yours to be wider or more narrow, you can certainly adjust it as you feel fit, but I've got mine pretty, um, pretty far away from the top and then it comes down into this vicinity down at the bottom. It's darker along the edge and then it's kind of lighter as it gets into this center area so it'll look like it's kind of going into into the horn itself. And then I'm going to put a little shadow with black on my brush underneath here. So I just have black on my brush. I'm going to pull this right along the edge of that horn. And then what I do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna pull it down into the base of that horn. So as I'm doing this, my paint will probably start to dry out on me. So you can either just kind of rub it in as it blends. And if you need to, you can pick up some of that base color um, that brass color that we use to get it to blend in. So that's gonna be um, your call if you can get it to blend in nicely or if you've got to pick up some of that um, base coat to get it to blend in. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna put a tiny bit of a shadow around this little edge of the 
um, horn in through here so it looks like it's kind of moving or bending around the edges so just making sure this looks pretty fluid and it kind of all connects this helps to clean up my edges of the horn as well as provide me with that little illusion that it might be um, going around the edges you could certainly do a little bit up top if you wanted to we'll put a highlight and get this to all connect in a minute but that's where I'm starting with that so then on the main body of the horn I want a shadow over here on the left hand side as well as a shadow maybe underneath here so I'm going to start again with that black and maybe a touch of orange on my brush I realize that I have these details in through here but we're going to hit those details later so as they are entering into the um, horn itself you could skip over them if you wanted to like this or you could just kind of go right through them and then we'll put those objects back on top later but you've got that making of them started already with that exterior profile that you put on there so black with a little bit of orange is how I'm starting this I'm gonna put a little bit up in through here then what I'm gonna do is I'm picking up my original brass color and I'm gonna get this to blend in. And the beautiful part about this, well, there's a couple of beautiful things. One, we're not going for photorealism here, so don't feel the need to make it perfect. Um, and two, there's, it's meant to resemble a metallic type of surface. So with a metallic type of surface, you, it can be reflecting so many different ways. It can be reflecting you know different objects that we can't even see in the you know outside of the viewing range so don't feel that it has to be um, perfect so now that I've got that shadow and it's blended in pretty well with the with the rest of the area I'm gonna put highlights and I'm gonna have those highlights blend in with the rest of the um, with the instrument as well so I didn't wash my brush but if you feel like you're over if you still have a lot of black on your brush you can just wipe it off on your paper towel so my highlight color is going to be yellow and white. So I have yellow and white on my brush. I'm going to put a big highlight in through here. So this is going to show the shininess of the inside of or the that horn part. And I'm bringing it in a fluid type of motion around the around the horn. <laughs> so that way it looks like it is just kind of reflecting and showing a lot of light around the the edge of the horn and then once I've got that highlight on there I'm going to start picking up my my brass color and making sure that it just kind of blends in nicely with that exterior brass color so it's very, very similar to what we did with the shadow where you put the shadow on then you pick up that base color and you get them to blend in with one another so they look like they are just kind of um, working together and if you you know you want to get all the way up to the edges and if you feel that you went too bright or it's too dull or whatever you feel that it may be you can certainly let it dry for a minute and then just kind of adjust it however you feel fit but again think of it as a metallic object that can certainly be um, reflecting many things around it so that's looking pretty good to me I think I'm going to put a little more uh, highlight right in this section here just to make it look like it's reflecting a little bit more light from somewhere so that works for me and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the main body so yellow and white is where I start I'm going to put a nice ref a nice highlight up in through here and maybe down along this side and it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge this is a round object so when you're doing highlights on round objects you don't necessarily have to put that highlight right at the edge you can put it in a bit and then I picked up my brass color and I'm making sure that I've got this to um, blend in so it makes my painterly eye happy and again because it is a shiny object I can have almost like this striped kind of look to it which would make it look pretty natural with the um, reflections and highlights coming from the stuff that is around it in the atmosphere or in the room or wherever this is taking place and then I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight on this piece in through here so a little bit of yellow and white I don't have much of a place to much of a area a large area so just a little bit of yellow and white I think I'm going to put this 
in this vicinity right in through here then pick up my brass color and just get it to blend in with those neighboring colors and then of course you would just sit here and fiddle all you want until you feel like you've got a nice uh, nice highlights and shadows for your metallic object and then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got your horn shiny as you want you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the details on our saxophone i'm going to be using my small brush the colors that i'm going to be using are orange brass black and white and how i'm going to do this is i'm going to be doing a whole bunch of those um the little keys along the side of the saxophone to give you some shapes and some objects and if I have to, which I will, I will um, add some extra little detail on here. Then we'll add highlights and shadows and then we'll be done. So I'm going to be using a combination of my brass color plus orange on my brush to create the keys. So brass plus orange on my brush. And I'm just gonna be creating a series of um, circular type of um, shapes throughout this. I think I'm gonna have one, oops, I want you to be able to see it. So put a little bit more orange on my brush. So this is gonna be in through here. And they're gonna be a little difficult to see until I um, put my details on them, but it, this at least will get it started. I'm gonna do some orange ones and then I'll come back and do some lighter ones. So orange, plus my, um, my brass color. I think I'll go ahead and put one in through here. I'm going to uh, put another one somewhere in through here. And again, mine is not cor correct <laughs> as far as um, the exact placement that these are supposed to be, but it is good enough for me uh, to make my, my painterly eye happy. So that's what that's where I'm going for it. I'm going to put a couple maybe ones coming in through here. Maybe I'll have um, some coming in through here, another circle one here. So just a bunch of circles and um, curved kind of lines that makes me feel like I've got a good representation of an actual um, saxophone. But again, you could certainly um, make yours more uh, correct than mine, but I'm just kind of going for something that is nice and representational. So once I've got these all on here, I think I'm going to add one up and through here, and then maybe one coming out in through here and up like this. I'm going to put um, my brass color plus uh, white on my brush right now because I want to add a couple of lighter ones too. So I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up some of the brass color plus white. This will give me a couple different tones of these objects. Um, I think eh, maybe we'll just add a little bit of that on top of these as well. So I've got that brass color plus a little bit of white. Again, just giving a little bit more dimension to them, to these little pieces. And then I will add a, um, a highlight and a shadow. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now after I put these little markings of my brass color plus white on my brush. I'm going to wash and dry my small brush. I'm going to go in for some, some shadows. So my shadows are really just going to be black. And if I feel like that's too bold, I'll put black plus my, um, my brass color on there. And really, I'm just going to kind of um, consider my light source to be up top somewhere. So I'm going to have my shadows on the bottom side of these um, keys and valves and stuff. So just a little bit of black is um, where I'm headed with this underneath, kind of giving myself a little outline underneath them. And again, I'm just going for something nice and free and sketchily. I don't need to do anything perfect for my painterly eye to be happy, but if you feel that you need to go a little bit more um, detailed, you could always look up um, saxophones, like the profile of a saxophone, and give yourself um, some more detailed uh, information that you could uh, account for as you are painting yours. And then of course I'm just going to kind of 
go through these. This is giving them that, that look that they might be sticking out a little bit. So right now I'm primarily using black uh, with a little bit of my brass color on my brush so it's not too, too um, invasive. You could always use a little bit of water on your brush. That's going to allow you to have more free-flowing lines as you're doing um, this, these shadows so they kind of work their way into um, a smooth style of line as opposed to um, one that could be broken and stop halfway through. And if you felt you needed a little more shadow on the back side of the um, saxophone, you can certainly bring that shadow line down. And then I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and do these last couple of ones. Maybe this one's got it over on this side or underneath this little piece. And then I'm going to um, wash my brush and put some highlights on here. So wash and dry my brush. And my highlight is primarily gonna be white, but I'll probably use a little bit of that brass color too if I get to a point where I'm like, ooh, that's just too bright for it to be, um, you know, a distinct highlight. And I'm just kind of swiping in my color to my light color to give myself a little bit of a highlight. I think I am going to use a little bit of that brass color just so I have a smoother kind of line to this and so it's not so stark white. I want it to look a little bit more natural. So sometimes when you're doing highlights, we want to do them white because um, that's what our brain tells us to do. But if, the, if it's too light, it's not necessarily going to look that natural. I mean, obviously we're just going for a nice painterly um, interpretation here, but if you want it to look, um, have a, a little bit of a realistic look to it, utilizing that um, base color plus white is what's going to provide you with a nice natural looking highlight. And then once we've got this done, we're going to be utilizing this small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting our movement marks. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my small brush. So what I mean by that is it's gonna be the um, implied lines that are gonna tell the viewer that stuff is flying out of this saxophone. So it's gonna imply movement, so I'm gonna call them movement marks. <laughs> it's also gonna be stems from our flowers, um, little swirly streaks, things that are just kind of flying out. Again, implying that these are all in motion and we're gonna to add to it. So the colors I'm using are black, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna go from the dark to the light. So I'm gonna start with black, then I'll go to green, then yellow and white. And yellow and white I'll be using together. So I wanna have kind of thin, narrow lines. I don't want them necessarily to be big and wide. So especially when I'm using my black, I'm actually going to drop a couple of drops of water into some of my black paint so I can thin it out, almost like an ink consistency. And then what I do is I take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette, which is gonna give me a nice pointy brush. And then as I do this, I'm gonna try not to press too hard, but um, I initially want to make sure that I have a couple of important ones in, in place, which are the stems to my flowers. So I'm going to um, put those in place first, and then I'll start to add all of the other um, wiggle marks in, in place. So everything's going to kind of shoot out of here. So I have a stem in through here that I want to contend to. If this is the center of my flower, maybe it's going to be a little like this, and then it'll kind of shoot out something like that. I'll have a couple of um, leaves coming off the side of it and I have this one up in through here. So I want this one to kind of look like it is coming from my horn. So just kind of maybe get this one to come in through this direction. And again, you don't need much information when you're doing something like this, um, but just enough to, to give the, the viewer the information of, of what's, what's taking place. So now that I've got those stems, maybe I need a little one coming out of this guy here too. Can't forget about this little guy. So something like that. And of course you can just hide it behind. So now I'm going to just kind of make myself some more implied motion movement marks. I'm gonna use my black watered down paint right now. Maybe I've got a little 
kind of swirly mark over there. I'm going to almost like lightly kind of dust my canvas. I'm not pressing very hard. I am overlapping into the center of my horn a little bit so I can make sure that I have um, some of these pieces evident that where where their origination point is from. Then maybe I've got a couple coming in in this direction. I like to um, to, for safety purposes, sometimes you'll hear my hand kind of rubbing on my canvas. What's happening there is I'm stopping myself from pushing too hard with my brush. So it says you can only go this far when my hand is resting on my on my canvas. But that's just one of my little my little tricks. Maybe this one looks like it's coming outside. I think I'm going to be switching to green in a minute, but I just want to kind of maybe get a couple of these darker ones up in through here, just making sure that they all are coming from the direction of my horn or a, a good enough direction to sell the story to my viewer. And then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, start picking up green. When I go into the green, I don't necessarily have to water down the green because it is um, not as dangerous to me. I'm okay if I do some wide marks with my green, whereas the black, I didn't want that to take over. So that I definitely um, was a little bit more cautious when it came to um, came to the watering it down. So, and I, as I'm doing these green marks, you can do them next to your black marks or you can have them independent of their own. It's all totally up to you. You can really just have fun with this, make it look like they're going behind objects make it look like they're you know they could certainly go in front of some objects but I know that we have our detail work that we're going to be doing on um, on our flowers in a little bit so that's gonna I'm gonna kind of save save that um, I don't want to put too many of these movement marks in front of them if at all so I can have that um, the detail of those objects just kind of standing alone on, on their own two feet. And then maybe I'll put a little bit of this green in through here. I think I'm going back into my black. I think I want a little bit more black up top in through here. I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up a little bit of black so we can have a couple of darker pieces up in through here, maybe just in conjunction with some of these green ones that we have, just again to follow that motion all the way up and now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm picking up yellow and white is going to be my next color and I'm going to use them both at the same time because I know that the yellow will be very translucent so if I use it alone what will happen is it will in essence as it dries it will get darker and I may not be able to see it as much as I want to so I'm going to use it with a little bit of white on my brush which is going to allow it to be very evident um, as it dries and I don't want this to go too too white so that's why I'm using them um, together you could certainly use white on yours if you wanted to but I think I'm going to be utilizing primarily the yellow and white. I'm digging how it's looking right now, so I'm just kind of having fun with it. You can certainly add to, to anything that you want. Just enjoy this process. Let your brush kind of have its own fun as it's going through this process. And that was very white, and I'm just going to live with it. <laughs> so some of them, because you're using the colors at the same time on your brush, some of them are going to end up a little bit lighter than you expected or have more you know, white in them or green in them. I'm thinking that's pretty good right now. Um, you could certainly, again, tweak yours, go more full on if you wanted to, or just kind of let it rest, let it sit, wait to cast judgment until we've got all of the final details on our um, on our other stuff. But I'm digging the way that mine's looking, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let that go, and then we're gonna be utilizing our small brush for the next step, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our little wheat pieces. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a little shadow or a stem down the middle, and then I'm gonna put little highlights wherever I'd like them to be. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm starting with brown paint. And what I'm really doing is I'm just kind of putting a stem down that middle with my brown paint, and you can pull it up 
in between some of these little pieces on the sides if you'd like to. That's going to add that extra little bit of dimension and make this look like it is really realistic if you want it to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and find another one in through here, give myself a little bit of a um, stem down the middle, and then pull up some of those little shadows by the um, by those pieces of wheat. Go ahead and find the next one, do a little stem down the middle, pull up these little pieces in between. You can notice I'm not going all the way to the edges. This is just intended to be that little bit of a shadow in the center of the wheat to provide the stem as well as the dimensional elements to it. And if you had a, a much darker background than mine, you could get away with using maybe a little bit of black on your, this one's already got some, some good stuff in the middle of it. Um, you could certainly use a little bit of black if you wanted to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up some yellow and white and this is going to provide the highlight. So I'm going more white than yellow and I'm thinking my light source is up top so I'm going to be doing a little bit more on um, the top side of these pieces and you don't have to um, highlight the whole thing. I'm just kind of picking an area where I feel it would be the lightest which is up top and giving myself a couple of quick strokes on, on that particular area. So I'm moving down to this one down here. I feel like these little guys here would get the brightest and if you wanted you could go full on white. That's totally fine depending on how light yours is. And again I'm just going to kind of repeat that on all of them. Not all, I mean some of them might be light enough for you. Like I feel like I want a little more yellow in this one. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow on my brush even though I already had yellow and white. I I felt like I wanted a, that bit more dimension in through here. But you could go full on white on on the tips if you wanted to. If you if you wanted that, you know, super vibrant highlight to it, it's going to be a visual preference. Depends on how bright or how much texture that you want to show on them. And then of course I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here. This one I feel I want a little bit more yellow as well. So I'm going to pop it a little bit more yellow on my brush just to give it that extra bit of dimension. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your wheat done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our gourds. So I realize pumpkins can kind of be considered gourds, but I'm calling these two things over here gourds. And they can be like squash kind of things too, but we'll just call these gourds for simplicity purposes. <laughs> I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black, brown, uh, maybe a little bit of that gray, yellow, and white. So I'm going to approach it like I did the wheat where I'm going to do my shadows and then my highlights and any little details that I want. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom here. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then get this to kind of just um, fade up into the object. I realize part of this is being hidden by my my pumpkin over on the side here, but I'm going to just kind of roll with that. And these kind of um, uh, vegetable-y things can have like creases in them. They can have dots on them with different marks and freckly kind of things. So you can really have fun with how you want this to be. I'm utilizing the remnants on my brush just to kind of give myself a little bit of detailed information there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on this right one, which is with a little bit of black and brown, maybe a touch more black than that. And I do know that I've got my piece of wheat here. So I'm going to just kind of gently work around this little piece of wheat to give myself um, the, the bottom portion of this um, gourd like this and then I'm just going to get this color to just kind of um, blend in with the rest of that um, color that we had for the base something like that. Now I'm going to put a little bit of brown and white on my brush so brown and white is where I'm going with my highlight of sorts for the top of this brown and white and again I might use a little bit of yellow in a minute 
but I don't want to compete with the objects that are that it's next to. So right now I'm just kind of getting my um, initial kind of highlights and information on here so I know kind of what direction it's going to take. And then if I feel that I want a little bit warmer of a color, I'm going to certainly add a little bit of yellow to it. And of course you can add little speckle marks and all kinds of fun stuff onto these little guys in through here. But if you want it to pop out and look like it is um, like a three-dimensional object, you'll want to put a light spot kind of in here and in here to, I just added yellow and white on my brush, um, to tell the viewer that it pops out a little bit more. That'll be my dominant highlight part when it comes to um, telling the viewer that this is a three-dimensional object. And you can, of course, add more information. You can get these little stripes to to happen a little bit more if you want to. You could, like I said, you could add some little speckle marks. I can take a little bit of brown and add these little kind of freckly marks on it if I wanted to. Put a little shadow over here. So these, again, are just really fun objects that you get to kind of explore different painting styles with and give them different information so they look all kinds of unique. They can be different colors. They can have all kinds of fun stuff to them. They just are very autumn looking to me. Uh, maybe just a little bit more lightness up and through here just to get it to pop out a little bit more. I like my three-dimensional objects and if if the tonal value is too close to your background you can add a little bit of an extra highlight along that edge. That's gonna allow that object to just kind of pop right out and be visible in front of your background. So don't feel like if it's um, not showing up as much as you want it to that you can't do anything about it. You can just add that bit of a highlight and that'll get it to pop out. So this little guy over here, I don't really need to do much to. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and white for my highlight, just make sure I've got that that top area represented as my light area, and then I'll just kind of rub this out, maybe with a little bit of brown on here. And again, I'm just giving the implication that there's a a, a gourd of sorts that is just kind of flying flying off the side of my canvas. And then I'm going to utilize this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your gourds gorgeous, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our pumpkins. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, orange, yellow, white, and green. So lots of my colors. So again, I'm gonna approach it the same way that I did the other things. I'm gonna be using black and brown as my shadow. Um, I'm gonna have a shadow at the bottom as well as where I want the stem to come out. So this is gonna be the one that will have the most detail on. The other ones are just little um, accent pieces along the side. So what I'm going to do, oops, I have white on my brush. We don't want white on my brush when I'm doing a shadow. So washing and drying my brush, <laughs> picking up a little bit of black and brown. So I'm going to have my shadow on the bottom side of my pumpkin. So something like this. And then instead of bringing it up all the way softly up this um, up this object, I'm going to bring it up where in these kind of rows. So I'm going to designate before I start pulling that up where I want my center area to be for my stem. So I'm going to designate kind of in through here and I have these little bumps that I can go for or towards. So I'm going to kind of create these curved marks towards those um, bumps that we've already kind of established. So a trick also is just put a little bit of water on your brush as you're running out of um, black paint. The water will help you to kind of just pull it a little bit more and just getting these to kind of introduce themselves to one another. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of brown and orange to get these shadows to just make sure that they make sense and that they are kind of on the softer side, I don't want these shadows to really be super firm lines as, you know, if I want this to look on the more realistic side, I want them to kind of just be soft 
in through in through these areas as opposed to just distinct um, lines. So the orange and the brown is helping me to make make that happen. It's allowing me to kind of blend that um, black out into the neighboring areas. I'm not using a lot of paint, just kind of getting this on there. And then we'll put um, a highlight in a minute, which will get these little sections to to pop out even more. So that's going to be that one. I'm going to go ahead and move to this other little guy who's just popping the bottom in through here. So this one, again, I'm just going to put my black and brown down at the bottom. And of course, I don't have that top area to designate. So I'm just going to kind of um, use my intuition here on these bumps, give some curved lines in through here. Going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a little bit of orange and brown to get these um, shadowy areas to just kind of merge into the neighboring orange, which is what we had originally put on there. And then I've got this little guy over here. So black and brown is where I start. Going to put the bottom of it is down here, but I'm going to utilize some of this left portion to just steer the viewer to understand that it's three dimensional. I'm going to go with those little dips that I had already put on the um, on the exterior shape. I washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up orange and brown to get this shadow to just kind of um, blend in a little bit with that neighboring orange. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to put my highlights on. So the highlight is going to be at the primarily on this guy right here. It's going to be up top. So I've got it. I'm going to have it a lot on this top side as well as the top side where this pumpkin pops out and is closest to the viewer, which is right about in through here. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white and yellow on my brush and I'm going to get this these highlights to kind of just um, really start to emerge and take up a good amount of this area in through here. So the trick to this is you don't need to use a lot of paint. You're just going to kind of build it in this um, kind of striped type of brush stroke. And this is going to be very similar to what we do on the flowers in a minute. Um, I want my brush to be moving in the motion of that shape. So for me, the shape is round. So I'm allowing my brush to move in that direction. So wherever I feel that that is taking place and up towards the top here, I don't need as much of that shadow to happen in between these sections. So I'm okay with kind of overlapping that a bit. Now that I've got it on there, I'm picking up my orange paint and I wanna, I did not wash my brush. I wanna get these to intermingle with this main area coming down the side. So even if I find myself overlapping that orange and my highlighted area, I'm okay with that because I want them to intermingle with each other. I want them to speak together. I want them to look like they're just lightly blending into one another. And then I just kind of keep repeating that process or elevating that process. So this is good to me, but that highlighted area needs to be a little bit lighter. So I just picked up some white paint and I'm just going to kind of keep slowly building this highlight until I feel like it is as bright as I want it because it would it's going to get darker down in this little center. So I just kind of keep adding these little layers of light onto this surface. And then once I feel that I've got it in as bright as I want it, and it's it's pretty good to me right now. I'm feeling like I'm I'm enjoying the the vibrancy of it, just trying to get it to look nice and natural of, along these edges. And of course you can keep fiddling with it. I think I'm putting a little bit more orange, yellow, and white just to make sure that I've got this area over here. And then I'm just gonna hit the top two and I've gotta come back and give this guy a uh, uh, a stem too because we need a we need a stem on this one it'll be it's a it's a visible portion of the of the um, the pumpkin so I just want to make sure that I've got it represented and I'm just blending this down into that darker orange down below make sure that I've got a nice transition and then of course you can just sit and fiddle with this like highlight 
this is one of those that, you know, you might find yourself fiddling with it for probably more time than you really need to. But it's a, it's a fun way to, to understand how to get the, the objects to look three-dimensional. And then I'm going to go up top to here with a little bit of yellow and white to start that highlight and just kind of tap it in up top like this. Wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Pick up a little bit of orange and just get these to gently kind of blend in with one another. This one's not going to take as much effort as that one down below. And then same thing with this right guy over here, just a tiny bit of yellow and white. Give myself a little bit of that highlight up at the top. Pick up a little bit of orange to get it to blend in and then any little tiny modifications. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and put my stem on. So I'm going to have my stem with black and green so I have black and green on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of bring mine right from this center part and I'm gonna overlap my little gourd here a bit giving it a nice shape that I like and through here picking up a little bit more black paint just to make sure that I've got this transition into this darker area and then if you wanted to, you can, I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picked up a little bit of white paint. I'm going to add a tiny bit of a highlight on my, um, on my stem. And then we are going to be utilizing, I just picked up a little brown. I didn't know if I said that. Um, we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your pumpkins done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our flowers. So I'm using my small brush. I am gonna be using black, brown, red, white, and maybe a little yellow too. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do my centers and then I'll finish my petals. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush and I'm going to create a dotted kind of center for these flowers and we'll put some texture on them in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of creating this fun little center for the flowers, just dotting an area that is um, kind of ruffled around the edges. So brown and black. I'm gonna have this one maybe in through here, so just a little tiny brown and black is gonna give me this area. And then on this one down here, same thing, just a little bit of brown and black. And oh, these are imaginary kind of flowers. <laughs> I'm creating them, or I've created them specifically for this painting. So you can certainly make yours more um, exciting than mine. I'm going to, while I have this color on my brush, I'm gonna just pull out a couple of little shadows in between some of these um, petals. You can, I'm adding a touch of water to my brush too, just so my um, that shadowy area is not going to be too invasive. So just pulling out a little bit of shadows so we've got a little bit more information. I'm going to do the same thing to these guys over and through here. So this way, again, just kind of helps with that dimensional element. Maybe I've got just a couple of little ones coming out in through here. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to add some three-dimensional little speckles on top. So I'm going to be using, uh, let's use white, yellow, and red for my little speckle marks up top. And yeah, that's looking pretty. Maybe a little bit more white in through there. And again, you can really make yours into whatever style of flower that you would like. If you want yours to be more yellow or more red feel free to just have fun with this this is you know the part of painting that for me is the most you know enjoyable when we can just kind of let go and and have fun and create things that are coming out of our out of our head and not you know necessarily something that is representational of a photograph you know you can just have have some fun with it you could use some orange in the centers here you can really you know have fun i'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a three-dimensional look trying to not over dot it so it's not a solid color i'm looking to just get those little speckly marks and then i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to go in for the highlights on my petals you could um 
utilize the red as the shadow color and then we're going to use some red and white as the highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start with red paint just to make sure that I've got the, them fully painted along these edges so that red is kind of as dark as it could be. You could use some brown on your brush as well if you wanted this um, red to look like a more of a maroon color or a darker version of um, red. You could use it with a little bit of brown to add some um, deeper shadows in between, but I know when I go to add that highlight color, this red will act as my shadow. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up red with a touch of white. So it's mostly red right now with a touch of white, and I'm going to start adding these highlights on the part of the flower that curves out and would be closest to the top and to the viewer. So that's going to be kind of the trick of it is you want, if you want it to look like it's kind of rounded, that's where you're going to put the brightest part of it is going to be at that, it, at that spot on the petal. So, and again, I'll probably do multiple layers, but right now just kind of getting this on here with the red and a little bit of white on my brush. So I'm leaving some of those spots in between the petals with that dark red. So that way it allows for the viewer to understand that the petals are separated a little bit. I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. So red with a little bit of white right now is going to get these um, these highlights started. And you can see I'm continuing to use that curved brush stroke so that way it allows the viewer to understand that they are curved objects. So I'm hitting the center area with it and I'm not bringing, or the center of the petal, I'm not bringing this highlight all the way into the center of the flower because that would, to me, have this, a little shadow in it. And then I just kind of keep building the light. So maybe this time without washing my brush, I'm just picking up a little bit of white. And I never, at this point, will be picking up a lot of paint. Just a little bit of paint goes a long way when you're looking to do um, building these kind of highlights, so to speak. So just a little bit of paint on your brush and you just kind of keep getting lighter and lighter as you're going towards that brightest spot of that petal. And then you can sit here and fiddle as much as you want. You may find that maybe you add a different, another color to your flowers. You could add yellow into them. You could add, you know, purple, if you have purple floating around, you could certainly make these into whatever style of flower that you would like. And then we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your flowers finished and you have them as vibrant as you want and as dimensional as you want, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using black paint, and I'm going bottom right with this one. So I usually sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very cool seasonal image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.